In this bonus section, we'll talk about advanced procedural textures. You can see here that these objects all have the same material applied to them. Over in your V-Ray Asset Editor, it turns out that that material is clay. Fly out the menu, and we'll start with a procedural texture here for the Diffuse channel. Go ahead and click, and the first one we'll talk about is the Dirt procedural texture. Go ahead and click on Dirt. To preview the changes we're about to make, go ahead and draw a region around just those objects, and then start an interactive render. In the dirt map here, you see under the parameters, there's a mode. Click on that drop down, and you see there's a few different modes in which this can be used. However, the most popular is ambient occlusion, so we'll use that. With ambient occlusion, we can use the dirt map texture to simulate dirt that's collected in the creases. Also, this setup can be used to simulate, in a crude fashion, global illumination, so that where objects are close to each other, you see a shadowing or a shading between them. Now you'll see up here that we have an unoccluded color and an occluded color. While you'll almost always leave these at white and black, let's go ahead and set this to something like red, just for this example, as it will be far easier to notice what's going on when we make the changes. The radius here controls how large the effect will be. So sliding the slider to the right will make the effect much bigger, and sliding to the left will make it quite a bit smaller. Also notice here that you have a slot for a texture map. Go ahead and click on that. We're looking for a black and white texture, I'll pick Noise, and I'll make this a little bit bigger. I'll set the amplitude to 4. What happens here is that the effect of the radius is either full, where it's white, or it's negated, or not at all, where it's black. So you can see as this starts to render that you get a splotchiness that might work for certain kinds of dirt effects. For now, we'll click back, and we'll clear this texture. And we'll also slide the radius up to 10. With the radius set quite large, we'll be able to see the impact of two parameters down here, distribution and falloff. Moving the distribution to the right will force the rays to gather along the surface normal. So you notice it really tightens the impact. The falloff works in tandem, only this controls the speed of the transition from the unoccluded to the occluded. So sliding this slider to the right will make that transition happen much faster. Before moving on, I'll set the distribution to one and the falloff to zero. Next, we see the bias X, Y, and Z, which will bias the rays in those directions. Let's see how this works. Switch bias X to 1, and you see that it'll bias it in the X direction. Try changing the Y to 1 to see the difference. And go ahead and play around with the Z direction as well. You can mix and match values to experiment and see what kind of an effect you can get. Note, too, that these can be negative values. I'll go ahead and set each of these back at 0. And then scrolling down, you can keep objects from occluding one another by checking on the same objects only here. Now the only place you see occlusion is where an object is occluding itself, as in the case of this cup or the top of this pail. However, this cup is being almost entirely occluded on the inside. If you needed to avoid that, notice the ignore self-occlusion checkbox. Go ahead and click that. And in this case, you got rid of that effect. And with the combination, you've gotten rid of the effect almost altogether. Having toured through all the settings, you can blend a few together to come up with an effect that looks like dirt in the creases of these things. Or, if we just uncheck these things here and scroll up to the top, we can also pick a dark brown color for the occluded material. Another way to handle this, I'll go ahead and stop the interactive render, and back over in the Asset Editor, I'll click the Back button, then click on the Settings tab, and switch off Interactive Rendering so that we're in Progressive mode. Then with the flyout expanded, go ahead and click on the render elements, and let's add a render element for extra texture. For this extra texture, click, and we'll set this texture to the dirt. Just like before, we can pick an occlusion color, and set the radius and distribution. Then click back, and click render. Click on the dropdown here, and preview the extra texture channel. Then back over in the Asset Editor, fly out the clay option, and we can remove the Diffuse map. Next, let's use another texture here in the Diffuse channel. Go ahead and click on that icon, and let's pick Curvature. Also, to preview our changes, we'll switch back to an interactive render. When applied as a map, the Curvature texture looks at the mesh that it's on, and it's looking for curvature in that mesh. So from a point, it will determine the surface normals in a nearby radius. In other words, it calculates the smoothness of the mesh as it transitions from each sampled point. 
To do this, it's using extra rays, so we can get finer details using this map. For example, let's see if we can mask the edges of the cup, the vase here, and the top of the pail using the curvature. Over in the settings here, you see sample spread, min and max output color, and scale. The values that you'll need to use with each project will vary based on the scale of the model. So the default values may not always be appropriate. Play around with these to see if you can get those edges to mask, or you can follow me, and I found that these values here will do the trick. Notice how it was able to pick out those edges. Next, we'll try rounding the corners of the table using the edge texture. So first we'll click back here, then click on the wood texture in the material list, and scroll down to the maps, and bump. And let's add a texture here in this texture slot, and we'll find the edges texture. I'll redraw a region around just this small little set of corners here. You can see here corner radius. So while we can see the effect subtly right now, change this value to one, and it'll be much more obvious. Once you have a hang of the edge texture, try to do the same thing to the bottom legs of the stool. But I'll go ahead and move on to the next one. I'll redraw my region here, click on the back button over here, head back over to the clay, and I'll clear this texture map. The last texture we'll take a look at is the triplanar texture. We'll be loading it here in the diffuse slot, and you can see triplanar is there. The triplanar texture is used to map 2D and bitmap textures onto objects when there's no suitable UV coordinates for the mapping of the textures. To get a better sense for how this works, click back, and let's clear this triplanar texture for just a moment. And instead, we'll load a wood texture into this diffuse slot. Go ahead and click on bitmap and pick the wood to diffuse, and then click back. I'll fold this back in. And if you take a closer look in SketchUp, you'll notice that these textures aren't mapped very well. And you can see the same problem here in the rendering. The triplanar texture will help us fix this. So back over in the asset editor, in the material list, select clay, fly out the right menu, and let's clear that wood texture from the diffuse. Then let's click on that same slot, scroll down, and apply the triplanar texture. I'll draw a smaller region around just the cup for right now. Now with the triplanar texture, you can apply the same texture on all axes, or you can flip this down and specify a different texture on each axis. To get a sense for how that works, go ahead and click on the color swatch here, switch the X to red, switch the Y to green, and switch the Z to blue. And that'll visually give you a pretty good idea of what's going on there. In our case though, we wanna switch this back to same texture on all axes, and then all we need to do is in the texture X slot, go ahead and click, and we'll add that bitmap for the wood diffuse color. And if I get a closer look here, that issue has been resolved. The scale parameter sets the scale for the tiling of the texture. And the blend is used to blend any seam lines in. So for example, if you slide the slider all the way to zero, you should be able to find a seam line somewhere. For me, it's appearing along here. And then what you do is set the blend value up until it smooths it out for you. For the frame offset and the texture rotation, these give us extra controls to position the texture. We don't really need them for this example, but go ahead and play around with them to get a feeling for how they work. Back over in the asset editor, under the texture rotation, we have a series of controls that help you randomize things about the texture. Take a moment to try each one to see how they work. Randomization is controlled by the random mode. And you see here we have by render ID, and if you flip this menu down, we also have by face ID. So by render ID, which is what's been happening here, it calculates the seed based off of the object ID, and if you switch to face ID, it will calculate the seed based off of the material ID on the mesh. I'll switch back to by render ID, close this down, clear the region, and go back to the original scene so that V-Ray can re-render everything with all the new settings.